Okay, so let's talk about those one-dimensional arrays. Before we start, let me just tell you why this is interesting to, to use that. I mean, why this is something that is important to learn. Well, uh, we know how, for example, if, I, uh, if I'm asking you, I think, inshallah, you'll be able to answer that question. I think you might be able to find it uh, quite easy, actually. If I'm asking you to ask the user to give you, like, five marks, and then you calculate the sum and the average, and then you display them, well, maybe this is some sort of a one of the questions of the something regarding the practical, right? So you're able to do that. Even if it's five variables, you have to declare five variables and then put the kb.next whatever, and then it will be working, right? What if I tell you now, I would actually have ten numbers. Oh, you're going to say, well, phew, this is just like a painful task, but we know how to do it. Let's declare ten variables, n1, n2, and until n10. What if I to ask you now, uh, calculate the average, and try to get the average of uh, 100 numbers? No, I don't think that you're going to be copying and pasting 100 times, and 1, and 2, and 3. It's too painful. And it's not something that is really easy to use. Then it should be a better way to do that. And the better way is arrays. What if I can have like one name of a variable, but that same name, it has like multiple parts, multiple boxes, like one box. Instead of that box, we have small multiple boxes. And this is the advantage of those arrays. One-dimensional arrays, this is the idea of, of it. We declare one big variable, and in that big variable we have many small boxes, and each box has the ability to store one value. So we can have like 100 values, different values into one name. But how can we distinguish between those different boxes? Well, we give them numbers. This is the box number 5, box number 2, num box number 22, whatever. And this is the way how we can have one name under that same name we can have like many values so this is the some sort of introduction to to th the need of those arrays and we're going to learn how to create arrays how to initialize them and the last two parts i'm going to probably to leave them for another another meeting all right so let's uh, get it done actually um the first part this is like something that shows introduces the problem what if i had like to have like 1000 students i'd like to calculate the average this is something that is not really useful to have something like this so let's think about something more interesting which are arrays and the arrays is as we said we are some collection of related data and this is something important that all the data in an array will have the same data type this is important. I cannot have like one box inside of that box. I can have one int, one float, and ten strings. And no, it's not possible. With the arrays, if I specify an array of int, all the content will be int. If I specify it as double, everything should be double, and so on. And this is how I declare it: type, which is data type, and then I put those brackets. That's why you know. Remember, I was telling you these are not brackets. The brackets are something else. These are the brackets. The brackets are used for arrays. The parentheses are used for something else, the braces for some other thing. So just get your names right so you don't get confused. So you choose a type, double, int, whatever, and then you, sp you put the braces, open and close. And then the, the, you give the array name, like any variable name, you choose the name that you want. And then you put double equals, uh, sorry, equal signs, and then new. The same data type, if you put double here, it should be double here, int, int, uh, so on, and so on. Well, this works for for the primitive data types as we were using. And then between brackets, you put the size, how many boxes you want inside that big box. So that's, that's how it works. Let's see an example. And uh, like this, for example. So this is an array of doubles. How many? Five, five elements. I can have five elements, and all these elements you know, are double. I cannot have different data types. And if I'd like to get the boxes, I mean, those boxes are named a bit, I mean, they don't, they're not named, I cannot give them names, but they're automatically given numbers. You don't control those numbers, you just need to remember one thing, because these numbers can be confusing. Not that confusing if you remember the story about the strings, if you remember when, when you extract in some strings, the, the numbers, the position of those letters started from zero, if you remember. So the same thing here, it starts from zero. So I have five boxes from 0 to 4. So the, the number of boxes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But how many elements? Five elements. 
So these these numbers here, they call them indices. We call them indices or subscripts sometimes, or you know, and it starts from zero to size minus one. So if the size is five, that means from zero to four. And this is how it works. If I'd like to access one of those boxes, those elements, I just need to give the name of the array with the number of the box between brackets. Like this means this box over there. Uh, what about this score two? Well, it means this one over here. And so on. This is how it works. The only thing that you need to remember, this is might be confusing, is this is it starts from zero. And now if you'd like to do whatever you want, you just need to put the the right number and it's going to be working as any other variable. You can have something let's say for example like this put 32 into score 3 which means this one over here uh, score 0 equals score 3 plus 1 which means take whatever is inside of score 3 32 add 10 to it the result put it in score of 0 what is score of 0 this box over here so this is how it works take this from here put it there I just need to give the right naming and don't get confused with the numbering that's the array that's it now there's some things that we might learn that will help us into uh, dealing with the arrays, which is something that is called this length. Uh, if <coughs> this is something that can be used really, and, uh, I mean, can be very ham handy and helpful when I'd like to know the, uh, when I'd like to know the uh, uh, whatever the <laughs> the name. I was just yeah, just try to because the pauses are taking some time for editing. Yeah. And uh, because we have uh, sometimes we would like to know the size of the array, and the array is this this method that we can use this length. I mean this instance variable that is going to give us this information. Maybe with an example we can find it maybe more interesting. What about this one? If I'm using based on the previous declared score uh, system that output print score.length plus elements you see so this score.length is some sort of a variable i mean it's a value whatever it's inside of this length of the score is going to give us the size how many elements in the array score so in this case five so i should see on the screen like this score array contains score array contains five elements this five comes from here. So this is the dot length that we need to use every time we'd like to get that v the number of of uh, elements in an array. It's interesting because sometimes we would like to make some changes into the size and if we make a change in the into the declaration and we don't use so, uh, this dot length in our code, we need to make a lot of different changes in all our code. Maybe there's an example later on. Uh, if we'd like to initialize, that means put an initial value for 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 the array. Uh, I need to put a value in each one of those elements of the array. So this is something that I can use to put that, which is a for loop. What a surprise! Why a for loop is more adequate for this? Because we know exactly how many boxes I have, how many elements I have, and the for loop works better when I know exactly how many times I'm repeating and I know how many times I'm repeating so this is how it works it just I'm declaring score which is this uh, score of uh, double five doubles so I have five different doubles and then I'm asking the user to give me five numbers so imagine that the user types like the first number 80 so this 80 that I typed the user type that is going to go to score I but what's inside of I well, it depends because the first time it's zero, zero. the second time it's one, two, three, until four. 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 Because this is equal to five, right? Score dot length is equal to five, so I'm less than five. That means four. So for zero it gets in, one gets in, two gets in, three, four gets in, five it's get out. So that's why this is okay to to use this this way over here. At just one line, I'm going to able be able to read five students what if i'd like to have 500 no problem just add zero two zeros here and two zeros here and that's it you're done you're going to have like 
one array of 500 elements and it's going to be repeating 500 times because I'm starting from 0 to 499 so that's that's the, the advantage of this uh, of this uh, array these arrays with the loops actually I can it's easily extendable and this is the advantage also of using this dot length because I don't need to change anything I just need to change here and that's it so this is how it works when I'm putting in this the numbers the user enters the numbers they're going to be put into the different uh, element different uh, boxes respectively from 0 1 2 3 and 4 and then that's it you just need to always remember we start from 0 when we finish length minus 1 this is the last index this is the last index that's why we don't use equal sign mostly because we don't want it to be equal because there's no box 5 if i use score if i use the equal sign I will have like score 5 and there is no place with that is score 5 and it's going to give us a problem it's going to give us actually an array of out of bound exception yes so if you just only just type the number the what do you mean? The, the outputs. yes so just, just type the, model, the number so that's but I don't get the output of what? The, of this code over here? Yeah, this is just a, a students, five students this tower, yes I'll just uh, display this uh, <coughs> Well, because when you enter them on the keyboard, they are going to be displayed. L like when you type them, it's going to you're going to see them on the screen. That's why and we did not output anything. We're saving them in the into the array, but you are seeing them just because you type them. If you imagine you run at beans, for example, and then you type the numbers, you're going to see those numbers that you typed. That's 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 the output. We did not print anything out except this enter five sc student scores. But this is just an example to show you how we can put something inside of the array. Yeah, so we start from zero and we finish at score.length minus one because we didn't put the equal sign. And we always increment by one. We generally, with arrays, we generally go one by one. And this is actually another example when, I mean, this is interesting to have uh, like this array a score dot land is dot land needed. Uh, yes. So yeah, sure. For my question about the the new the new dynamics about the double score if I'm new. Yes, this one. Should we start? Uh, should we the type the scan of KB equal new scan? Of yes, yes. Tr of course, yeah. yes, yes. It should be like it's, it's assumed here that because I'm using this thing over here, it's assumed that I have like scanner. S KB equal new scanner system dot in uh, yes, import and the import before yes. So I'm ju I'm just focusing on just the things that I'm I would like to understand now, which are the, you know the, the the arrays. That's why we did not put the, the declaration, nor the import. But you're right. This uh, it has to be there. So uh, now, if I'd like to extend this code to work with f seven numbers, for example, I'd like now to be working with seven numbers. Then I need to change all the fives to sevens, right? But what happens if I'm using this score.length? You see the same code, but except of ins ins instead of having like these fives there, I just have to put one five because I need to specify the size of the array. And then from that, everything goes on. Uh, score.length, this is five. Uh, sc uh, score, this is five, th as it was before, except that I don't have to, to, do to write it myself. Because now the advantage is that it, if it changes to seven, I don't need to change anything here. Because it is going to become this is 7 and this is 7. I don't need to change anything. And did you realize that it is more interesting to use this score.land if you're using this mm, average rather than i? Because if I had used i, it should be i minus 1. And then i should be declared before. Remember the story that we've seen in the previous lecture? So the score.land will always give you the number of elements that we have. So if you divide then the sum with the total numbers, then this is this is your average. So that's that's the end. That's the, the, the usage of this score.land. So no change is necessary when you make some changes to the size of your of your array. Okay, this is something I'm going to maybe talk about next time with this another type of array initializations. So I'm not going I'm going to stop here inshallah.